Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Last night I did a webcast of Comet Atlas, tracking it with my 8-inch telescope and collecting over 200 images. But now it's time to process those images. So let's talk about my new Comet stacking software and why I created it. My processing pipeline usually starts in Deep Sky Stacker, which you see here. Normally I start the process by registering the images, as I've already done and this labels the stars and you can then add the comet's position. Normally you hope for the comet to be automatically detected as a star-like object. Hopefully the nucleus is detected in that fashion and then you can simply click on it to assign the position of the comet in each image. This allows you to then stack the images on the comet because the comet is moving from image to image. As you can see here as I switch images the comet's position is very clearly moving in every single picture. So in order to keep the comet from just being a blur in the image, we need to align the images on the comet. The problem is that oftentimes Deep Sky Stacker does not automatically detect the nucleus of the comet as a star-like object. So you do have the Edit Comet mode and you can force the comet's position in the Edit Comet mode by holding down the shift key and clicking directly on the comet. It's much easier, of course, if it were to automatically detect the comet like it detects the stars, to simply click anywhere near the comet and have it automatically assign that as the comet's position. But it oftentimes doesn't do that, and it hasn't done that in this case. So you can see it's done a good job even detecting faint stars in the image, but it still doesn't detect this relatively bright comet. It's just too diffuse. So Deep Sky Stacker doesn't recognize it as a star-like object. So I would be forced to manually click very carefully on the center of the comet in every single picture. I have over 200 pictures from last night, so this is obviously a very tedious and time-consuming manual process. What can be done about that? Well, I've written a program for automatically aligning the images on the comet based on the comet's orbital elements. If we know what comet it is, we know what time it was when the picture was taken, and we know where the picture was taken from, it should be possible to calculate what the comet's coordinates should have been at that time, and then align the images on those coordinates. So the first step in this process still does involve Deep Sky Stacker, because these are single shot color pictures from my camera and they have to be debayered in order to create color pictures. There's a matrix of color pixels on the CCD of this SBIG ST2000XCM camera. Every pixel has a filter on it for red, green, or blue, and there's a repeating pattern of red, two green, and one blue pixels in a four pixel pattern that repeat all over the CCD. So different CCDs can have different patterns, so you have to tell Deep Sky Stacker what type of CCD you were using so that it decodes the images with the right pattern. It can then save these as regular color fits files that have three channels, green, red, and blue, that any program can interpret without having to know what type of CCD it was originally. So that is the first step in this process, is to actually stack and uh, calibrate these pictures before taking them into my program to align them on the comet. So we're going to go ahead and stack these pictures now. As I said, this will allow Deep Sky Stacker to decode these images so that they are FITS files with separate red, green, and blue channels that any program can recognize and use. It will also allow us to calibrate them with the flat field so that you don't have these dust spots and the vignetting at the corners of the images is taken care of. We will then take these files into astrometry.net's software, which I run locally on my machine in Linux, and we will be able to batch process them so that they all have embedded astrometric data that will allow us to determine the coordinates of every pixel in the image and determine which pixel should correspond to the comet and how the comet should be moving from image to image. This will allow us to line these images on the comet automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up such that the final picture eliminates the comet as much as possible from the final image. This will be used as a background plate for when I combine the two images of the stacked comet and the stacked stars in order to produce an image where the comet's position is frozen and the stars are frozen in position as well. The result will do intersection mode so that it only contains the portion of the frame that overlaps all of the frames 
frames did shift position slightly when I had to reset the auto guider a couple of times throughout the night. Flat fields, we'll do median kappa on that. Alignment, automatic. We will create a registered and calibrated file. This is important. Uh, these are the files that we're going to take to astrometry.net to have astrometrically solved. So make sure that this is checked and we will save those individual calibrated frames where the stars are perfectly aligned between the frames and they've also been calibrated for the flat field subtraction and any dark field subtraction you want to do so that you can take those images into astrometry.net, astrometrically solve them, and then run them through my software to align them on the comet. Go ahead and click OK on that, and then we will start the stacking. So this process is going to take quite a while because I have over 200 images here to process. So I'm going to skip right to the part where we go into Linux with the files that come out of this stacking, the registered calibrated individual frames, and I'll show you how the stacking process uh, produced files for us to then load into astrometry.net and actually get astrometrically solved FITS files. Alright, so I'm in Linux now, and astrometry.net's software is being run in order to astrometrically solve all of the photos that I took last night. This is being done in a batch process, so it's fully automated, and I can just let it run, and at the end I should have over 200 solved files that have the coordinates embedded in them, so that the coordinates for every pixel in the image can be determined, and conversely, we can take the coordinates that are expected for the comet and convert that into a pixel value in the image. And that's how these images will be aligned on the comet automatically. So if you're not familiar with it, astrometry.net provides the ability to upload photos of stars and give you a solution for the coordinates of the center of those photos and the coordinates for every pixel in the photo with a new FITS file that has the coordinate system embedded in it. Now, you can simply upload your files directly to their website and get a solution, but again, this is tedious when you have 200 files or more to work with. When you have a large number of files, it makes sense to just do them in a batch process on your own computer. And fortunately, they do allow you to download their software and run it locally on your machine. So that's what I've done here, and it's currently solving all of these photos. So I'm going to take it back to Windows now once we have all these solutions generated and we'll load these images into my program and align the images on the comet automatically based on the comet's orbital elements. Alright, so now we're back in Windows and it's time to get the orbital elements of the comet. And currently my program is designed to work with orbital elements exported from JPL's Horizons system, which you can get to by googling JPL Horizons web interface. It will bring you to this page, and you need to change a few things to set it up properly. First you'll have to set the ephemeris type to orbital elements, and then the target body, you simply type in the comet that you're looking for, in this case C2019Y4. Uh, center should be set to Sun, which is the default, and time span set it to your date of observation. I'm setting it here to the 22nd of March because that's when the observations occurred by universal time. Then you set this display output to download save. Then you just generate the orbital elements and save the text file into the directory with your images and my Python file. I've already gone ahead and done that, so we're just going to minimize this window now and run my program. So you simply type Python, then the name of the Python script, space the text file, horizons underscore results.txt is the default name it will give you, and then your latitude and longitude. Here I've entered just a very approximate latitude and longitude, and then hit enter. Now it will begin calculating the position of the comet in all of the images that are present in that directory. So this will work with files that are titled .new as the file extension. That is the default extension it gives you from astrometry.net software. But if you want, you can easily change it within my program simply by altering the script a little bit. So let me bring that window over here so you can see. Currently the pattern it's looking for is star.new. And so if you want to change that to fit or fits, if you've already changed the extension of the files coming out of astrometry.net,
that's how you do that. You simply change this to whatever the extension is of the files that you're going to uh, use to generate the aligned images. It will output the files as FITS files, but it's going to look for .new files because that's how astronomy.net alters the extension of these files by default. So here we go. It's working now and it's calculating the predicted position of the comet in right ascension and declination in degrees and the offset in pixels from one image to the next. So it's aligning all of these images now and we will have images where the comet is in the same position throughout. So I've already gone ahead and done this once for these files. So I can go ahead and show you the results. In Deep Sky Stacker, this is what it looks like when you load up the files that came out of the alignment process. So you can see this large black area around actually represents the complete canvas, representing the maximum and minimum position of the comet uh, throughout the entire run. And it automatically pads the images out so that the dimensions of all the images are equivalent. That's necessary for Deep Sky Stacker to be able to load them. All of the images need to have the same dimensions for Deep Sky Stacker to stack. So that's what it does. It does a single pass through where it finds the maximum and minimum X and Y offsets of these images and then pans out all of the files by that amount and repositions the files so that the comet re retains the same position throughout. So if I go forward here, and skip through these images, you'll see that the comet stays in the same position from image to image even though its position relative to the background stars moves. So you can then stack the comet and if you use a Kappa Sigma combine it will eliminate the star trails and retain just the comet. If you then combine that with the file I generated at the beginning you get a picture where the comet and the stars appear to be frozen in time. So here's what that final stack looks like. This is a rough job I did processing it but you can clearly see the comet with its coma and tail, and the background stars, both appearing to be fixed in time. So that, this program I find to be quite useful and a huge time saver in terms of manually trying to position the comet within Deep Sky Stacker. I'll put the link to it in the video description and I hope you guys find it useful. Next up I'll be doing a time lapse of all of these images and show the comet in motion. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.